Well, here I am building another engine. These engine building videos are disastrously boring if you ask me, but a bunch of people seem to like them, so I guess I'll make another one. I don't really have a plan here, which is pretty normal, but the way I figure it, if you've watched some of my older videos, you've already seen me build these from start to where I've got this one right now. And I don't see any reason to keep beating that same dead horse. So what I think I'll do is show this one from where it's at on to completion. And maybe show it in a little bit more detail than what I have before. You're going back in time here to some footage of rod piston assembly for this engine. So while this is playing, there's a couple things I wanted to explain real quick. First of all, I have uh, seen in the comments where some people don't really seem to understand why I use a lot of IPD products. So most of the time, the reason that I'm using IPD is because they're offering a product that I can't even get from the OEM. Uh, this engine's a good example. So I've got the new raised edge liners in this engine. That's something I cannot get from CAD OEM. And also, these are one-piece steel pistons for a 14.6 liter C15. Caterpillar doesn't even offer a one-piece steel piston for a 14.6 uh, 3406 or C15. So, it has nothing to do with saving money. It's, it's more about the product itself. Um, I'll take the one-piece steel piston in a higher horsepower application over a two-piece steel top aluminum skirt any day. So, that's why I'm using IPD parts. Also, some of you will probably notice that several of my earliest videos are gone now. There are uh, several reasons that I did that, and it's something that's been coming for quite a while now. There's a lot of good info in those videos. I hope they help some of you to learn some stuff that maybe you didn't know about these engines, but they're gone now, and it is what it is. Injectors are ready to go in. Torque that bolt down. Do that five more times. That's all there is to it. All right, I'm gonna put the front gear plate on it now. That's it there, it's all cleaned up and ready to go. Got my bolts cleaned up and ready. Studs are installed in the block and torque to spec. Uh, this is a C15, so it uses the thicker metal rubber combination type gasket. That gasket sandwich is in between the block and this plate. And you've got a couple little feed holes here one of them's right there. That's the oil feed for the uh, small adjustable idler gear. And there's another one right here. That one feeds the bigger idler gear. And then you've got a big stub shaft that bolts onto the block here. 
that's the cluster gear stub shaft and the feed hole for it's right there okay I've got the gear plate and the stub shaft for the cluster gear on now so you can see the oil feed hole for the cluster gear right there and then the oil feed hole for the adjustable idler gears right here and the oil feed hole for the lower idler gears right there so that's how those three gears get their oil for lubrication there are eight inner bolts that hold this uh, gear plate to the block or 3816 by one inch so one two three four five six seven eight and then there's two dowels that locate all this uh, one of them's right there and the other one's right there so those two dowels locate the gasket this gear plate and then they'll also locate the front cover when I get it put on I'm gonna jump back here and put the flywheel housing on it I've already got the new seals in it this is a C15 flywheel housing so it's got one seal right here that goes around like that and it's got another one up here and then those two seals seal against the block right here and right here a 3406E flywheel housing will seal up a little bit different, but just like on the front, there are two dowels in the block, one right there, one right there. They fit into the flywheel housing right there and right there. So that's how it's located on the block. And then there are 24 bolts that hold it on. Flywheel housing is on and torqued to spec. So the next thing I'll do is put the rear main seal in. She turns counterclockwise from the flywheel end, so you'll want to get the right seal on the right end. This is my front rear main seal installer tool. That'll press the seal right in there, keep it nice and even and put it right to the correct depth. It's not the only way to do it, but it's definitely the best way to do it. Okay, so this is a two-piece deal. There's an inner piece that bolts to the crankshaft, and then this outer piece slips over that. The seal goes in the end of that, and then it's this outer piece that shoves the seal into the bore in the flywheel housing and onto the crankshaft. So all you gotta do is spin this nut down, and that's gonna push all that in. So I'm just turning that nut and if you watch there, you're going to see the blue of that seal slowly go away as it gets pushed into the flywheel housing and onto the crank. And then eventually this is going to bottom out and quit turning, which it just did, and the seal is fully installed. Okay, I've got the cam in it, and I'm getting ready to put the cluster gear and the two idler gears on. So all three of these timing gears have been to the machine shop and got new bushings. They'll usually last about a million and a half miles, give or take, and then they're ready for a little attention. So this cluster gear will just slip onto the cluster gear stub shaft, and then that plate bolts onto the front of the stub shaft and that's what retains the gear on the shaft. And then here are the other two stub shafts. I've already showed you these oil feed holes, so this is the stub shaft that goes right here. So the oil will feed out of the block through the plate, out of that hole right there. It'll go into this little channel on the back of this stub shaft, run around and into that hole, and then it will come out right there and that's what lubricates the bushing in the gear so the bolts that hold the gear plate to the block the nuts and bolts that hold the stub shafts to the gear plate and then these bolts that hold the gears onto the stub shafts all get blue loctite 
but you're not going to want to do that yet to the adjustable idler gear because you're still going to have to move it around to set backlash between it and the cam gear. You can't put the cam gear on yet because if you do, the front cover won't go on. Uh, it's entirely possible that I may be a little too far into the bush lights this evening to be explaining this to you, but I'm doing the best I can, so... There's a timing mark on the crank gear, I think you can see it there, and then there's a timing mark on the cluster gear, which is where that white stripe is. And you're going to want to get those aligned, but that's not how you time the engine. What I mean by that is there are no timing marks on these two idler gears. So the way you time the engine, you pin the flywheel, and then there's a timing mark on the cam gear, and there's a notch in the front cover, and you line those up. I'll show you how that works when I get there, but... <clears throat> the water pump's going to go on this hole right here. It's going to drive off the bigger gear on the cluster gear right there. Then the smaller gear on the cluster gear is going to drive the bigger idler gear. The bigger idler gear is going to drive the smaller adjustable idler gear. And then it's going to drive the cam gear. So it's time for a front cover now. anaerobic sealant. I highly recommend it. The front cover's on and I'm getting ready to bolt the flywheel on. Then I'll be able to pin it so I can put the cam gear on. Okay I've got the flywheel on it. I also managed to uh, knock the end of my thumb off in the process but that's the way she goes. You get one of these put all the way together and you don't bleed at all, you're probably being way too careful. So there's a hole in the flywheel right there and there's a dowel in the crank. You're gonna wanna line those up. That's what gets the uh, rotational orientation of the flywheel right. Put the 12 bolts in, torque them to spec, 200 foot pounds, give or take 30. And as you can see, I've got it pinned now. Here's a 70 pin cam gear all torn apart. Got everything cleaned up and I'm fixing to go back together with it. Then I'll put it in. This is the back side of the gear so these teeth on here, those are what the cam sensor reads off of. Cam adapter, seal plate, and retainer plate on, ready for the cam gear. All right, I've got the cam gear on and I've got backlash set between it and the adjustable idler gear. Got that gear off because I'm gonna explain how you adjust backlash. Uh, the adjustable idler gear stub shaft, which is the one you're looking at right there, it's got a dowel in the bottom of it. You can see it there. That's what locates it on the gear plate and it also pivots from left to right on that dowel. So what you do is loosen the nuts and the one bolt that hold that stub shaft to the gear plate and the whole stub shaft will pivot from left to right. And I don't know if you can tell, but as you go to the right, the gap between the cam gear and the larger idler gear down there gets wider or further apart. And as you go to the left, it gets closer together. So as you pivot that stub shaft to the right, backlash will get looser. And as you pivot it to the left, backlash will get tighter. Okay, I'll explain how you time these engines real quick. So once you get the flywheel on, you can pin it. And what that means is you've got a bolt or a pin and tool or whatever through the flywheel housing and into the hole in the back side of the flywheel like I've got right here. What that does is puts number one and number six piston at top dead center position. You don't have either one established at top dead center compression yet. That'll be done with the camshaft, of course. So the cam gear has got a timing mark on one of the teeth. There's a little divot right there where that white dot is. And then the front cover has a notch, which is the notch in between those two bolt holes you're looking at right there. So with the engine pinned, again, number one, number six piston are at top dead center position. You're gonna line the timing mark on the cam gear up with the notch in the front cover. And what that's gonna do is establish the engine in time at top dead center number one compression. The front gear trains all together now. 
So I can put the peanut cover on it. Got a brand new one here. Sure is pretty, but this engine ain't gonna be yellow. And I'm happy about that. I'm a cat guy all the way, but if you ask me, yellow just ain't a good look on a truck engine. Alright, I'm getting ready to put the new injector harness in this valve cover base. Then it'll be ready to put on there. I've got the new injector harness put in the valve cover base and got it bolted on. And I'm getting ready to put the pump drive assembly in now. So this has got new bearings in it. That'll go in this hole right here. It'll be driven off that bigger idler gear, you can see it in there. And then off the front side of this, the fuel transfer pump will spline in. That's what drives it. And then on the back side, the power steering pump will bolt on, that's what'll drive it. So if there's still anybody here watching this, which I would be shocked if there is, I wanna give you a little break to uh, break up the monotony and then I'll bring you back and continue on. Where are you going to turn around at? Well, I'm still sure to the side of that Well, I was on one look at this now. Uh, road right here. I guess we're going to back up and get a better run at it. Pretty sloppy. confident the next step is going to have something to do with this loader. I 
I built that motor, she sounds pretty good. So I'm just gonna take this loader and ram the trailer. giving up. Seat belt unfastened. Who the hell would wear a seat belt in this son of a bitch? That'd really tear some shit up. Yeah, we'll just drag her through the old water hole. Be all right. How deep is it? Oh, hell, that ain't bad. Is it hard? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be good. just barely fits under this bridge. Hope a train don't come. Fuckers level the sack down and hit the roof. He's way out there. That's where we're going to get the rest of it.
like they're fixing to do some pretty serious shit here. Riverfront property. big fan of that there death but what are you gonna do I guess No problem. One load of marshmallows ready to rock. All right, you can see the front side of the pump drive assembly there. And the fuel transfer pump's ready to go in. So it'll slip right in here like that and bolt on. Fixing to put the new water pump on so I'll explain how this works. That's the serpentine bracket. It goes on the front side of the front cover up here. And then the bolts go through it all the way through the front cover. And they come out of the back side and they thread into the water pump. So those bolts are what hold the water pump in the hole here. You can see the cluster gear in there. That's what drives the water pump gear. And then on the back side of the water pump, the impeller side, this plate will go in. And it sandwiches in between the water pump and this piece. This is the inlet. So the lower radiator hose connects right there. Okay, you can see how this works now in case my explanation wasn't very good. So there's the bolts going through the serpentine bracket. Coming out of the back side, threading into the water pump and holding it up in there. And there's what the impeller looks like. You can see a little bit of anaerobic sealant squeezing out and that looks good. The anaerobic sealant, you don't have to worry about it on the inside because it's soluble in oil and it won't set up except for in the absence of air. So, you could come back to that little bit of squeeze out in a month and it would still be liquid. It's not going to set up. Of course, I'm going to wipe it off. But Okay, I'm not exactly sure where I'm at with this video making operation, but this is what it looks like right now. Got that plug in the wrong hole. That plug needs to be right there. I'm so used to long head applications that I just put those in without thinking about it, but the dipstick's going in the front of this one. That's a $4 mistake. I'm juggling about three, maybe four engine serial numbers to get this one set up exactly the way we want it for the application that it's going into. 
which is pretty normal for me. Rarely does one leave here the same way that it came in. So I'm getting ready to put the Jake housings together. There's the new Jake kit. Okay, I've got the Jake housings all back together and ready to go. Got six new Cat Reman intake rocket arms, six new Cat Reman exhaust rocket arms. Did not get new injector rocker arms because the pins and rollers and these are in good shape. They're nice and tight and the rollers are smooth, so. No reason to spend the money to buy the new cat remands there. I did have the machine shop go ahead and put new bushings in them because I've got three brand new rocker shafts here and I didn't want to put used bushings against those new rocker shafts. Top end parts are all bolted in. Overheads run, it's ready to go. All right, I've got the oil pump on it. Suction tube, pressure tube, block stiffener plate. Let me get up under here so I can offend all the people who have drank the uh, corporate safety Kool-Aid. So that's all ready to go. Just need to stick the oil pan on and it'll be ready for paint. Well, unfortunately, this footage that you're watching right now was all that I was able to get of this engine before it left. It was one of those deals where I thought I was going to have the thing done 10 days before I needed to, but other stuff kept coming up, and uh, before I knew it, I was right down to where I was just barely going to be able to get it done before it needed to go. So to make up for it, here's some 73 Peterbilt action. Six V ninety two T. Maybe not. Not going to be a cold start. Well, that ain't sounding so good. Well, we got. I think we got a. We could have a connection. All right, round two. Give her a little Johnson. 